Alright, let's look at analyzing a map projection. And you can find all of those in or notes for that in the ClickUp Notes map projections. The same as for the previous lecture and these are specifically from pages 11 to 17. And to analyze a projection we're going to choose a sinusoidal projection. This one. It looks a little bit funny because it comes in sectors. One sector for 90 degrees west central meridian, 20 degrees east central meridian and 130 degrees east central meridian as well. If you put it all in one it would be uh, very difficult to interpret. So the equations governing the sinusoidal projection, in other words, how do you get to x and y from lambda and phi are these two. Fairly simple. And if we use r as 1, they become even a little bit simpler. So what do we do? We need to start with x and y like we had in the previous slide and what do you have to do to get to your fundamental Gaussian equations or Gaussian quantities you need to differentiate with respect to x and lambda and x and phi and y and lambda and y and phi so if I differentiate over here partial dx d phi and you can all differentiate I suppose. Uh, one side note here, if your differentials are going to be extremely difficult I'll give them to you. So you don't have to worry that I'm going to check your mathematics. So dx d phi then we need to differentiate dx d lambda which turns out to be cos phi because lambda becomes 1 and dx is minus sine phi cos phi becomes minus sine phi. Same with uh, y. dy d phi is 1 because phi, the derivative of phi is 1. And the y d lambda obviously is 0 because lambda doesn't feature in here. So we can calculate e which is dx d phi squared plus dy d phi squared. And that gives us that. If you put these in here, uh, dx d phi and dy d phi, you put this in here, that's what you come up with. Similarly for f, you can look at it that way. And if you put all these quantities that you've differentiated in there, you end up with minus sine phi cos phi. And g same dx d lambda and dy d lambda and you can see e is all about phi and g is all about lambda and f is a combination of the two and then you end up with cos squared phi and you can calculate j as well which gives me cos phi and once you've got your fundamental quant quantities what can you do? What's the next thing we want to calculate? We want to calculate the scales. So we've got E, F, G and J. To calculate the scales we just have to go back to our original Gaussian fundamental formulas which says that H is the square root of E and the square root of E becomes the square root of E. Simple. K is 1 over is, is uh, square root of G over cos phi. Now square root of G gives me cos phi over cos phi and that is equal to 1 and that's always equal to 1. And then we can calculate sine theta prime which comes from um, a previous slide remember we we did this as indicatrix where we had sine theta prime which is j over hk cos phi and so is cos phi over hk cos phi so the cos phi cancels out 
So it becomes 1 over h. It becomes 1 over lambda squared sine squared phi to the power of half. So what can we deduce from this? Firstly, we have a look and we see h is not equal to k. Therefore, the projection is not conformal. h times k is not equal to 1. Therefore, the projection is not equivalent. And you can go and have a look at the notes. He explains it very, very well. And we got k is always 1. And that means that's the scale along the parallel. Projection is equidistant along the parallels. In other words, along all these parallels, the distances are correct anywhere on this projection. And sine theta prime is not equal to 90 degrees in general when lambda is zero or phi becomes zero then sine theta prime becomes one then it'll be zero so it's normally not orthogonal except along the center meridian where lambda is zero and along the equator where phi is zero uh, but in general they are not the principal lines scale factor is always one along the equator and the central meridian that you can see from this as well the equator is zero degrees so cos phi is cos zero which is one the square root of d is also one so it becomes one and the same with h and you've got no singular points or lines if you look at anywhere on the scale you can input any lambda or any phi in there and you'll never find that the scale either disappears or becomes infinity and that's where you have singular points or lines but nowhere on this projection does that happen so the next thing we need to do is calculating the distortions and drawing Tissot's indicatrix now Using that point again, that one over there, which we in initialized, we said these are the things. H is minus 40. Why is H minus 40? We'll have a look at that when we draw this as indicatrix. Um, and we'll go over all these things again in the next video. But uh, in the meantime, we need to look at drawing the ellipse.